Welcome, everybody. We are with the PPL podcast, episode number four. It's draft day. It's all about the draft. I've got guest Marcos Del Pilar, the commissioner of the PPL. He's back again. Welcome, Marcos. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I love you know being here. <clears throat> I've got Alejandro. Alejandro, are you officially the GM or GM coach of Vegas? Give me, what's your role with the Vegas Smash? I'm I'm I'm, I'm the to do it all. I'm the do it all guy. Do right it now. all. <laughs> That's my role with Miami. I like that. My business card has no title, so I don't know. I'm still negotiating. All right, guys. Well, we can't start any podcast without our obvious starting point here. So I'm going to count down three. And Marcos, you're going to do what you do best. And it starts with a V and it ends with an S. I, I got to do it again or what? You got you got to do it every time you get no. together. One, two, <laughs> okay, three. Let's go. Vamos! Now we can get started. Okay, guys, picture this. So everybody that listening can close their eyes for this one. But we're here we are draft day. So Monday was draft day. We walk into this beautiful boardroom. We have all these beautiful tables set up with our team names on them. Let's start off with you, Alejandro. What's the emotion going on like when you're walking into that room and getting ready to draft? Uh, well, very exciting, obviously. Uh, that's that's an obvious one. But um, also intense, right? Um, it's a combination of excitement. You're building something from scratch. There's something so rewarding about that. Uh but also these these are very serious relation uh, uh, decisions that I've, that we're about to make, right? Not only if we're trying to build a team that can compete and win and re be representative of the league, but also the, the teams, the individual teams. That's a big that's a big uh, responsibility. Uh, but also you're you're about to hopefully affect positively the lives of, I guess six to eight people, depending on how many you guys drafted, you know, or everybody drafted. So you can change somebody's life. And and I I I went through this process as such. And I hope uh, I hope we did a decent job. Yeah. And Marcos, so different emotion on your end. You're the commissioner. Um a lot of work went into that day, right? And and leading into it. So what's the emotion on your side? Well, I, I, I get to feel, you know, very, very proud of the team of people that we have behind, uh, to be honest with you, because when I got in the room, I I automatically appreciated, you know, all the efforts of all the PPL team on putting that together. That was really impressive, you know, and uh, I was 100% sure that we were creating a huge impact, not only in our team owners, but also, you know, in the rest of the people involved, you know, meaning players, sponsors, and so on. So I was very, very grateful of the people that we have behind. And I guess for you a little bit, Marcos, too, it's like your 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 mind is set on like everything going smooth, right? So you're you're like for Alejandro and I, we're sitting there worried about our team and who we're going to draft and that sort of stuff. And then you're all about just making sure let's make sure this goes smooth. But it did go smooth, right? I think everyone loved the experience and Everybody got their picks, and how did it all go down at the end? Do you think it went well? Is that a question for me, or it's for you? Yeah, you're the commissioner. I want to know how you felt it went. Well, I uh, yeah, I, I could say that I felt really, really well, but uh, that is not my 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 thing. I think that some others uh, would probably talk about the experience. We tried our yeah. best, as we usually do, and some others yeah. will will need to recognize that if we did it well, or we will need to tell us, you know, how to do it better for the next time. Um, Alejandro, this one goes to you. So you're, you're, you know, draft, you're drafting and you're, you have two rounds. You have a women's round and a men's round. The men's were first yeah. and, and we have four rounds throughout this process. You've obviously handpicked players that you want, not knowing what other teams are going to pick. Yeah. You guys had the first overall pick for the men. Was it an <laughs> obvious choice? It, it really was for us, uh, as she, everybody here on, on the podcast knows, uh, lefties come at a premium. And I was lucky enough to have a top level guy that happens to be a lefty. So when I put everything on paper, even if uh, even if things were equal, meaning that the level of play was from, the, the, let's say, the top five guys were about the same. He was the only top lefty player, at least on my board. So it, at that point, he became uh, became a, an obvious choice for me. He was the highest ranked player in the world too, right? He was, was that, on paper. Yeah. yeah, he was the highest ranked and on the you know both the international list and the uh, North American list. Yep. Is being a lefty in the sport of uh, padel as important as it is in other sports like tennis? 
you know, and there's an advantage. It doesn't matter what anyone says. There's an advantage to being left-handed. What, what about the button pedal? Well, I think it's just that the advantage, you know, becomes bigger. And and the reason why I think it's because the, the court is more, comparing to tennis, the, yeah. the court is a lot smaller. So there's l less area to cover. So whenever you have a lefty, mostly, basically the, in the middle of the court becomes the, the strongest side, right? From yeah. the lefty plane on the on the right and, and righty plane on the on the on the left. The 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 middle of the court becomes the strongest stroke, if you will, yeah. on both players. So that's why. Um so let's backtrack before the draft. So before the Monday, we had a Sunday. Because that's how the it works. That's normally and, every week. Yeah, every, every week, week that happens. Isn't that amazing? So Sunday we have the uh the the owner's dinner. And Ronnie Strasser, the owner of the Miami PC, he hosted, which was incredible. Um, Mike, we got, we've got our producer, Mike. I'm going to you for this question. What was the vibe like there for you? You're, you're, you're coming in, you're seeing these owners that are all competing against each other the next day for the draft. Was there any weirdness there or was it pretty cool? Well, firstly, I want to just tell Alejandro that that name Smash, the nickname Smash is yep. amazing. That's a great name for a Fidel team. I, I thank you. I, I won't take credit for it. Somebody else did it. That's one thing that I haven't done for the team. The, the best thing, thing that we've done and I didn't do it. The only thing. So I love the name Smash, but quickly, I don't want to bury the lead before I tell you about the day before the, the draft. You teased that your first overall pick. This is an answer to a trivia question. Okay, barroom trivia. Who's the first player chosen in the very first inaugural PPL draft. You told me it's a lefty, but I didn't get a name. What is the name of this person? Give us the name. Yeah, I'll give you the name. Sergio Ricardo Alcoriza. Not only a great player, but very good looking too. Ask oh. him. Well, that's imp important. And he's good looking and he's got a great name. So that makes oh. two of us. <laughs> hey, uh, I think we're all good looking on this, uh, on that's this true. podcast here, Davis. So, the night before the draft, I was lucky enough to be in the room, and I was kind of like an embedded journalist watching everything. And there was this very healthy sense of competition. Like, there was definitely, like, tension in the room. Every team wants to beat the other teams on draft day. It's the very first draft. But at the same time, it felt very communal. Like, everybody was going to row together in, in, in the same direction. So I felt good about the league, PPL. Marcos was there. He gave us a vamos! Yeah. <laughs> and I saw that the, there was a healthy competition, including a controversial banner I saw regarding the Vegas. Oh Frank's yeah, Frank. that was the yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't know if we can yeah. swear on this podcast, but yeah, I won't. I won't swear, but I can show that image. F yeah, yeah. Vegas, and there were celebrities. Like I mean, big names. People. Like, I was hanging out with uh, Sebastian Yavinko, Okay, TFC superstar. He led us to an MLS Cup. We were hanging out. He's a co-owner of the Toronto team. Somebody Meanwhile, called in. Somebody called in. Exactly. Juan, yeah, tell about us. It. Miami franchise. You tell us, David. What celebrity called in? We had we had a very special person call in to wish everyone success, and that was Juan Martin Del Potro, tennis legend, called in just to say congratulations to the league and good luck on draft day, but mostly to say go team Miami. But he called in. <laughs> <laughs> so what I just want to say congratulations to everyone who organized that dinner because it was great to see the healthy competition, the camaraderie, everybody kind of getting together. I was so psyched. I almost wanted to enter the draft. I was so jazzed after that. <laughs> you should have. I've seen your game. I've heard about your game. Um Mar Marcos, that must have been a nice experience eh, for the in the dinner to see all the owners gelling, talking. Uh, being creative with each other. Everyone seems to be working and pushing the train in the right direction here, right? 100%. And I'm so proud, man, of the... I, um, I think that a Mike already described that, you know, this camaraderie uh, spirit, you know, and I was I was enjoy, enjoying the moment, you know, because part of our mission as well is, is try to build a family, you know, around the PPL and get, you know, the teams, you know, working together, you know, on the benefit of the league and the benefit of the sport. And I was I was really proud, you know, to see, you know, how all the teams were kind of working together, networking, you know, and and wishing the best to each other, you know. And that first in-person experience was, you know, something that we'll we'll remember forever. I think. Thank you, Ronnie Strasser, you know, for putting that together for us. That yeah, was a, an incredible setup for sure. I have to suck up to Ronnie all the time, so I'm not going to do it here. But yeah, Ronnie's great. <laughs> Ronnie is excellent.
You know, I look and then we go to Monday and we go into the draft and I asked this to Alejandro. I can tell you from my experience, you know, it, it became very serious very quickly, you know, as we as we got closer to uh, doing our draft and uh, Miami, we picked seventh overall. So we had to wait for six people to pick their pick before we got ours. And it was nerve wracking, you know, because you like you said, Alejandro, it's such a it's such an opportunity, but at the same time, like people are relying on you, not just your team, but you're picking players that are um, playing professional and a professional paddle league. They're excited. You're taking them in on your team. So it was a big responsibility, but boy, was it fun and exhilarating and all those fancy words that you're going to use. Mike, you should have been there. hundred percent. I, I, I agree with uh, Davis. Uh, I, I, I don't want to over state the importance of it but i also don't want to underdo it i do think everybody here in this room and obviously in draft during draft we all want to see this league grow right we all want the teams to do well and grow and and if we accomplish that together like marco said like as a family like that that day that seemed fun and interesting and intense and exciting could really become a massive historical day, right? That Marcos is launching the, the league in, in, a, in the largest market in the world when it comes to professional sports. So uh, I hope we look back at that day and we're like, man, can't believe that I had that responsibility, right? Yeah. So, um, it, yeah, hopefully. I'd almost, I'd almost like to have, it'd be almost great to have one of the draftees here, you know, because then there, you get the full perspective of, imagine thought- sitting there, because there's lots of videos on Instagram that I watched when they got drafted. They filmed themselves getting drafted. And That's the, right. So one one girl did. So it's so, it, it's so it, it was emotional to look at because you know we're we're drafting them and they're going to play on our team, but they're playing, and and they they haven't had an opportunity these North Americans to play padel like a European might have on a tour. This is this is their first experience other than a tournament. This is huge for them. Yeah. But I loved their I love the vibe they they get, they gave on social media. I thought it was I couldn't stop looking at all their posts and the excitement that came from that. Yeah, Did yeah. you notice that Marcos all the Yeah. Yeah, listen, 100%, you know, I'm you know, I got a bunch of friends, you know, uh, I, I could say dozens or hundreds of friends, you know, that were involved in this, you know, uh in somehow, you know, and all of them following up, you know, all our steps, you know, and people watching and say, hey, I wish I could be drafted or whatever. So the excitement was out there. And I would suggest that, um, or I just want to reassure that uh, that was not only happening in the U.S., not even in Canada and Mexico, but also all over the world. So yeah. I, I received, you know, hundreds of messages, you know, from all over the world, people following the, the draft and everything. And at this point, let me let me let me address this because I think it is important. You know that um, part of our goal was to to make you know the sport of padel a little bit more appealing for for the North American market. So we wanted to um, Americanize. I already mentioned that before. We wanted to to let let's say make padel a little bit closer. You know to the American mentality and uh, also make American North American people to resonate with the sport somehow. So I think that we accomplished uh, an incredible achievement, you know, for the sport in general, which is, you know, putting together this draft that is very, very North American, you know, within the magic of Padel and both things happening together at a time. Maybe we don't see the impact that this could create so far, but I will see in the future. I have a very strong feeling that um, we we made something that is very, very special for the sport. And we are opening more doors, you know, for North America by by getting, you know, American people and American mentality uh, to resonate, mm-hmm. you know, more with the sport because now they can feel that they have something, you know, closer. It's kind of the sport of padel is 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 also theirs, you know. It's also for North American players. It's not a Latin Latin sport that is is taking the world by a storm. Now it's an American sport as well. Yeah, and that's important. To, that's probably the most important point made is. Because I said this in the last episode that unless you make it theirs, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. You've gotta you've gotta build the culture right right within the city, right within the country, and and that this is the starting point. The rules in place and the amount of Americans that are playing in this, like our rosters are filled with North Americans. It's incredible. That's uh, that was exactly the thinking process. 
uh, behind, you know, Keith Stein, you know, and, and my point in this case, you know, the thinking process was how can we make the sport of Padel more appealing and, and, and more people uh, in, in the United States and, and Canada and Mexico to resonate with the sport? How can we give you now the lead, you know, to the North American players and people to say like, now this is yours. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not an international sport anymore. Now it's an American sport. Uh, and you guys need to take the lead. And that is also very well connected, you know, with the main idea of building this new generation of, of Padel ambassadors and Padel heroes and Padel superstars in North America. So we are doing both things at a time, making it more appealing for the fans, you know, because people understand very well, you know, how a draft is working and so on. It's very American. But uh, we are also building this new generation of of, of players, you know, that people will follow in the, yeah. in the upcoming months. Yeah. What I've noticed, uh, and Holly Andro, maybe you have too in your research of the players, it's amazing that the, the vast majority of North Americans, not so much from Mexico, um, but certainly US born and Canadian born, they're tennis first. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's it's pretty amazing to see the vast majority of them are division one players. Yeah. And now they've, so, it, so I think the next generation to your point, Marcos, is you're going to see grassroots. You're going to see six and seven year olds picking up a paddle racket rather than at 19 or 18, yeah. you know, and then, and then all of a sudden you start to see uh, a huge difference, just not in the population, but the quality of play, because there's a difference between I, I'm a tennis player. I'm sure I can merge into Padel. Okay. But not quite like someone who grew up in Spain and started at seven, eight years old. There's just the difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Davis, I agree. I think if you go back, and I'll go back to Mexico, I know you're talking about America, but but yeah. I think as long as the infrastructure comes to America, which I think it's coming, right? I had many conversations in the last week about that, not not the league, not the draft, but actually how, how the next step for the sport, again, not the league, will be all about infra investment in, in the infrastructure of paddle mm -hmm. in, inside America. But you're seeing it in Mexico, and I think it's going to be Normally, Mexico is behind the, the 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 U.S. and Canada when it comes to pretty much everything, and this is flip, right? Yeah. You look at when I go back home in Puebla, that's my hometown, and my brother still lives there. We we we're tennis players. We play Division One as well. He tells me like all these friends that we used to play against, they're not, now paddle players. All the right. coaches, the, our coaches, now they're paddle coaches. Right. So it's shifted, and I was having a conversation with. Osvaldo, the, the Cancun owner, and he was saying that the, the clinics, the, the leagues or the clinics, youth leagues, where he's at, there's way more paddle youth players than the tennis. I don't know if that's necessarily good good news for the, the sport of tennis. I'm obviously, I have a soft spot for tennis. I want tennis to do well, but is, there's certainly a shift happening, and I think that's going to follow here in America. You, you know one thing about tennis, though? Like, it it's such an international sport that I don't think anyone will ever have to worry about it ever. You know, like I, people talk about how many people start to play pickleball and paddle every day, mm -hmm. just as many people are starting tennis, you know? Yeah. And so the growth of tennis, I think is not going to, these are only going to make things like tennis, I think better. Um, question for both of you. I've been dying to ask this. I've been, I wanted to ask this even in episode number one. So we have, a we have, between six to eight North Americans, they're going to be on our roster. And then we have a, we have a blend of, of, of internationals on there. How are the internationals? Cause it's works both ways. How are the internationals going to blend with the North Americans and then vice versa? So I, it's safe to say, cause you've just talked about your first overall pick. He's yeah. going to be better than everyone else on your roster. Likely, he unless, he unless, wants he should, right? On paper, yep. that's that's on paper. That be the case. Yep. How could, how will he blend with uh, a North American? Um, because everyone's going to be in it the same way. It's not like you have a disadvantage or we have an advantage. It's everyone's going to be in the same boat here. Yep. But I'm really curious to see how someone might be a much stronger player mixing yep. in with someone who might be a bit weaker. Yeah, I, I I'm going to go back to what Marco said earlier. I think we need to we need to it, we set the tone, and I said me like we meaning you, Davis, me, the owners, we have to set the tone. And, and what I mean by that is it's, it's clear that the league wants to, one of the big uh, goals of the league is to promote, help grow paddle in, in the U S in North America in general, right? They want to, they want to prioritize that. 
And I think that's very, um, that's important. That's important for the league, which should be important for us. So I think that the international players coming and joining the, the, the team, not only it's an opportunity for them to get international exposure, more sponsors in the future, make additional money, right? All of those that are obvious, but also they, 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 they can, I hope that they can see this opportunity as they, they become the teachers, right? They become teachers how to play the sport. You're the anchor in, in terms of the education, right? You yes. can lead this team with education. And I think that's a great opportunity. And, and, and I hope that my team sees it, sees it that way. That would be my expectation for the Sergio, for, for Sergio in my team. You've played international for years. My other players have it. Your job is besides winning, right? On the on the on the court, obviously, it's it's to teach us, right? Yeah. Help us get better. So um, I, that's that would be my, my expectation. In that's team. and that's certainly I want to hear you, uh, Marcos, as well. But that's certainly how we we are thinking in terms of of Ruben, our international, is is to become a leader for the team, right? Because he's got the experience. Marcos, go ahead. I would go the. I agree hundred percent with with Alejandro, of course. But uh, I would go the extra mile in this. Because all these guys, you know, whether they are international or North Americans, you know, all these teams, you know, all the this group of players that will be representing <clears throat> its team um, will become uh, a big inspiration, you know, for for the entire society society in the United States. So we have millions of kids to get inspired by these guys. So that's why we are leveraging on them so much because. They will be all these single steps that we'll be making in the future for the sport of padel in North America will be followed by them. So they are, you know, the trigger to get yeah. people inspired to, yeah. be, to start playing padel, to start investing in padel, to start, you know, whatever is connected with padel. So they are kind of the the um, the main, you know, players. In fact, you know, mm -hmm. for for this. So I I had a great conversation with one of the international players that we we are looking to sign. Um, a woman who we can't mention yet, but we will soon. And we were talking, yeah, we we're talking. And one of the things that was really incredible was, is I used the analogy of, of a musician. And I said, right now you're, you're a musician who's only popular in your country and you need, you need to get your music out everywhere. And you can't do that unless you come out and you, you, you show what you can do because her, this person's brand is huge where she's from. Um, but it's not in the U.S. And and to your point, because uh, I'll steal your point, in order to build the game, she has to become a bit of a household name here. And when she's a household name here and they see how good she is, then the inspiration will begin. And all of a sudden, children are like, whoa, Canada in tennis was is what it is. And then all of a sudden, we have one good player. And then you have Bianca Andrescu and... Uh, uh, Dennis, and then you have Felix Ogin. So you have all these players, but it started with a star. You needed to have somebody in your backyard that you could look at. Do you agree with that? Not only agree, but also I think that uh, we we have an incredible beauty thing happening in here. That is that making this join in between some great names, you know, in the paddle industry forever, plus you know, adding these North American players and making them work together is going to create, you know, an incredible traction for all these new kids, you know, uh, being, you know, inspired as well, you know, by the experience and the expertise and the uh, the uh, the background, you know, of the former, you know, number one tennis or padel player in, in the mm -hmm. world. So mm -hmm. I think it is something magical happening here. I, I usually talk about the magic of padel, but this is something really magical yeah. happening in here. Yeah, it's much bigger than that. Exactly. Um, well, guys, I'm not going to keep you that much longer, but I, I do want to hear Alejandro. Certainly, you guys sort of next steps now. Draft is yeah. over. Mm -hmm. Draft is over. It's now. It's time to reach out players, get them signed, all that sort of stuff. What's uh, what's your vibe like? What are your players like? Are they all very excited? I'm sure they are. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Yeah, it's crunch time, right? We go from uh, intense and big responsibilities, but exciting and fun to like less fun, right? Because it's paperwork and contracts and language that I don't understand <laughs> because English is my second language to like, but but equally as important. So we need to make sure that 
uh, we're have so the next two weeks, obviously. Yeah, uh, we have until Marcus helped me out April third, I think, for us to sign all the players or the players that we want to sign, uh, draft players that got drafted. Um, yeah, yeah. So we'll focus on that. Um, we're having conversations with all of them. All of them are equally excited, but you can tell already who who are the ones that are not only excited, but they're just like anxious to get started. Yeah. You, you can yeah. sense the difference. Yeah. And, and those are the people that we want in the league. Um, some of them are don't have agents, right? They're just getting started. But some of them, I, I can tell you, at least one of mine has an agent. So that's uh, new for us. North so American? You're one of your North Americans? No, no, no. Well, one yeah. of the yeah, Sergio. Shows. No, not Sergio does. At least oh. he hasn't mentioned that. So I oh, hope nice. he does. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's interesting, right? That now we have like we have a player that's represented by somebody. So like we have to like navigate through that. You probably de dealt with that with the Miami signing. Yeah. So it's it's a different conversation, right? So, uh, but anyway, it's all a learning opportunity for us. We will have to we'll move really fast at, at accomplishing these contracts before the deadline and hopefully feel good about the team. And then yeah. the next step, obviously we move on to like planning Tampa and, and yeah. hopefully getting together and, and practice and train and getting to know each other. Marcos, and then you, what are next steps on, on the league side? Just getting everything ready, right? The, the, the draft is done. So now it's the X's and O's of the actual playing. Yeah, so that was an important milestone for us because we we just wanted to be in this stage where, where now the, the, the spotlights you know, are, you know, under the players and the teams and so on. So now it's time for them to sign, you know, and to, and to become the stars. And uh, we keep, you know, moving in the direction of getting everything ready, you know, on the neutral side in uh, Sara van der Berg Tennis Center, you know, SVB in Tampa, yeah. to get everything ready to work with the uh, broadcast, broadcasting agreements and so on. So we have the entire PPL team very, very focused and committed, you know, working every day really hard on that. Great things coming, more big announcement uh, announcement coming too, and uh, I can't wait to keep you guys yeah. posted. Yeah, lots of big stuff coming. Well, guys, uh, pleasure having you. Alejandro, we met on, on Sunday at the team dinner and then again on Monday. Always a pleasure talking to you, Marcos. You and I are basically like brothers from different mothers. Mike, you added something today that no one else, and no one else possibly could, so thank you. I'm going to leave you guys like I do with a question, though. Okay, so here's the question. If I have you on again, Marcos, you'll be on for sure. What is the ultimate walk to the match song that you have in your headphones as you're walking to play and compete in a match? And it could be different for all of you, but I want that in the back of your head. I want to know what that is. What song are you listening to? You already have it, Alejandro? Uh, yeah, of course, man. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Bill Go Collins. What's the name of the song? I've been waiting. Studio? I've been waiting for this moment all my life. What's the name of this, of this song? Um, oh, Phil, Phil Collins. The Genesis or Phil Collins? Phil Collins. Phil Collins. No, that's the one of the big drum. The big drum. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Mike knows it all. Mike has all these people on his podcast. He knows everybody. In the, in the air tonight is the name of the air. Thank you. Coming. Thank yeah, you, Mike. That's a good one. Marcos, what about you? I think mine is, you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty. Uh, Gypsy basic, Kings. You know, I'm a, say it again? Gypsy Kings. No, I, I'm a very ordinary guy, you know, I'm, I, I was also, always, you know, very impacted, you know, by this uh, Rocky song, like, bam, 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 bam. Survivor. Bam, yeah, bam, Survivor, bam. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eye of the Tiger. I, Eye of the Tiger, yeah, you are correct. So that was, you know, something that pumped me up, you know, right away. And as soon as I listen to that, you know, I, I, I can jump into the moon. So. Love it. Okay, good. I like to ask everybody that comes on. I'm not giving mine away till next episode, <laughs> but but for next episode, uh, we we surprise guests. We're gonna have a little bit of a roundtable. So the the hope is to have some athletes on next episode, and we're gonna talk paddle. We're gonna talk sports in general. We're gonna talk racket sports. We're gonna talk about what's the best sport, who's the best athlete in each sport, and we're gonna have some amazing guests on. That's cool. To talk about that. So Love thanks it. again, guys. And it wouldn't be appropriate, Marcos. You, I mean, you've done it a million times, but we gotta we gotta walk out of here the right way. So you're gonna, I'm gonna give it a one, two, three, and you're gonna give us your famous saying. Ready? One, two, three. Vamos. See you soon, guys. See you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.